I managed to get a hold of some Kodak HIE. For those who don't know, HIE is a discontinued high-speed black and white infrared film. And unlike any other black and white infrared film that's available today, there's two things that make this film very special. First, this stuff goes deeper into the infrared spectrum. For example, Rolly Infrared has sensitivity to around 750 nanometers, whereas HIE has sensitivity up to around 900 nanometers, meaning it could capture a deeper range of infrared light. And secondly, HIE doesn't have an anti-halation layer, which gives the highlights this otherworldly glow. So the combination of the unique look and it being discontinued has made this a pricey film to get a hold of. And to complicate things, this isn't a straightforward film to shoot. If you look at the box, there's two interesting things to note. First, there's this message that states, do not open can, load or unload camera except in absolute darkness. Film must be handled and kept in absolute darkness until developed. And if that message isn't clear, the film can also states very clearly that this is HIE and open can, load, unload camera, handle process in total darkness. That is because this film is highly susceptible to light leaks. And even when the film is fully rewound into the can, it could still get fogged because the felt trap doesn't block infrared light. The second interesting thing is if you look at the box, there is no mention of the film speed anywhere. To get an explanation, you have to look at the data sheet, which states, normal ISO speed values do not apply to this film. We cannot give exact speed numbers for this film because the ratio of infrared to visible energy varies, and most exposure meters measure only visible radiation. Basically, Kodak is saying, figure it out yourself, I am not your mom. Back in the day when this film was readily available, shooting test rolls wouldn't have been that much of an issue. But now, that's going to be a problem. I decided to cut my first roll in half. This was the exploratory test roll. First, I needed to figure out at what speed to shoot this at. And second, this is expired film, and I don't know how it was stored all these years. I figured I might need to overexpose it to compensate for any base fog, so I bracketed it around 50 to 400. Out of all of this, I only got one good shot. But this look is what I was expecting from HIE. And for something that's been expired for 17 years, it looks pretty good. It's infrared, so all the foliage is glowing white, and because of the lack of anti-halation layer, all the highlights have this soft ethereal bloom. Looking at the negatives, you can see that the base is actually fogged. Compared to other black and white film, the base looks fine, but Fresh HIE has a crystal clear base, so it's a little disappointing to see the fog, but completely expected. Although I'm not really sure how much of an impact it's having. Then we come to the trichrome section. The trichrome filters I use leak infrared light, so I combine them with this UV IR cut filter. It only allows visible light to pass, and this is where I messed up. Before I started, I looked at the HIE datasheet and I saw the spectral sensitivity curves. It showed that there's reduced sensitivity in the greens. I remember seeing this and I thought, well, this is going to be a problem. I should probably remember this. And then I promptly forgot. And while I got some decently exposed frames, the green channel was severely underexposed. This is what I have, so might as well just trichrome some of this. Yeah, it sucks, but trust me, I won't make this mistake twice. This is my second roll of HIE. I'll be honest with you, I thought I had it figured out. I trichromed one half and I shot the other half with just the R72 filter. And just the infrared stuff came out a little hot, but there are a few good shots sprinkled here and there. Then we have to look at the trichromes. This time around, I didn't forget to overexpose the green channel, but I forgot to put on the IR cut filter. This was clearly not what I was going for, but honestly, this is a bit of a bummer.
I wish I could shoot more HIE, but it's very cost prohibitive and it makes me really sad because I really like the look of HIE. But then this all reminded me, a while back this guy reached out and asked if I could try to recreate the HIE look and honestly I had never considered it. There were a few good suggestions thrown out there, like using diffusion filters or making my own DIY diffusion filter. I went with the cheap UV filter and hairspray method. I ended up spraying about six layers of hairspray. It looks glowy and bloomy. You know, I thought it might just work. This was shot on Rolly Superpan. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you could tell which one had no filter and which one had the filter, but if you look closely, you might be able to see that I kind of overdone it. I mean, while we're here, I also trichrome these, so yeah, it still looks bad, but it looks bad in color. I feel like if I just dial this back just a little bit, it might work. So I went back and I sprayed another filter, but this time I only sprayed three layers. It looks better, but it's also overdone. And this is when I realized another issue. This part is all soft and glowy, but this part is sharp. What I realized, at least for me, is it's not easy to get an even coat of hairspray onto a filter. And while I think this could work, I don't think I have the skills or the patience to make it work. I needed to look for something that was more consistent. After digging through a junk box, I found this. This is a Tiffin Fog 1 filter, and it makes the entire scene glow similar to a Pro Mist or a Cine Bloom filter. But the most important difference is I got this for free. Along with this filter, I have a very special lens I thought would be perfect for this. This is a Nikon 28mm f2.8 AI. What makes this particular copy special is that the rear element is absolutely thrashed. So let me just mount this onto this camera and you can just see. Yeah, it looks really bad. It has a very, very strong glow. I figure between this lens and this filter, there might be a chance. Not really sure. This was shot with Rolly Retro 400S, and these were all shot with that scuff lens in the fog filter. And surprisingly, most of these shots look okay. Not HIE okay, but regular okay. Yeah, there's some general softness, but it didn't have that bloom I was expecting. But then I had a few shots that were either in direct sunlight or overexposed. And, you know, I feel like it's kind of getting there. But if you look closely, there's also another big flaw. The glow is strong around the center of the frame. But if you look at the edges, it's noticeably less glowy. And if I had to hazard a guess, it's because most of the scuffing is at around the center of the rear element. But overall, out of this whole mess, I managed to get a couple of okay results. I might revisit this some other time and maybe try a different combination of filters. And given how trash this rear element is, I might try scuffing the edges a bit to try to even out that glow. I don't know. I wish Kodak would just re-release HIE. But in the meantime, I'll try and see if I could find a combination of garbage that'll recreate that look.